Good morning, everybody. This is a live severe weather briefing as we have high plains and sanity to talk about uh, this late afternoon and evening across eastern Colorado uh, and the Nebraska Panhandle. There you can see my target area. I'm probably going to target more of the northern portion of this risk area. You can see already this morning there are already some high dew points into the upper 50s, even near 60 uh, out there uh, being experienced. And uh, right now I'm going to be targeting the southern Nebraska Panhandle into far northeastern Colorado, a similar target area as yesterday, actually, uh, where there was a supercell out there uh, to the north of Sterling that dropped hail up to the size of baseballs. And in fact, there was a three inch diameter hail report up there uh, just to the north of Sterling. And so this is my target area and you can already wake up and anytime you have uh, dew points that are this high already in the target area and you're not depending on the uh, additional advection of that moisture, uh, that's always a good sign across the high plains. You also want to see these easterly winds uh, that will maintain the moisture depth across the target area as well when you have those backed winds. Uh, looks like some of the deeper moisture is even up into the Nebraska Panhandle there, far northeastern Colorado. Uh, that zone uh, where I was targeting yesterday. And then you look upstream on those dew points and you can see that they are 60 and into the low 60s upstream. So you have deeper moisture upstream as well. Uh, looks like there's a cold front uh, sagging through uh, eastern uh, Wyoming with temperatures in the 30s up there. There were severe thunderstorms up across eastern Wyoming yesterday. Uh, the strongest storm though was just to the north of the Sterling area, dropping hail up to the size of three inch uh, diameter. Uh, stones up there across uh, northeastern Colorado, just to the north of the Sterling area. And uh, today, uh, I do think that it's going to be a more widespread severe weather event than yesterday, definitely compared to yesterday. I think that, uh, uh, that well, definitely the mid-level flow is a lot stronger uh, than it was compared to yesterday. I've got the uh, HRRR model up here, which I think is a horrible model uh, for uh, high plains, but... I can still use it uh, to try to assess storm mode uh, across the region and across my target area. Uh, this is a three kilometer NAM here at zero Z. So we can look at 21 Z uh, before these storms are expected to develop. This is at 3 p.m. out there and different than yesterday, we've got much stronger flow. This is at 500 millibars and we've got winds in excess of 50 knots uh, there uh, throughout uh, the target area in eastern Colorado, uh, 50 to 60 knots out here. Uh, that jet streak uh, begins to impinge on northeastern Colorado, uh, the target area by 3 p.m. mountain time for sure. Uh, but really this entire target area now uh, is characterized by much stronger uh, mid and upper level flow. And uh, that continues from 21Z through 0Z. And then you can see the little holes uh, within this uh, mid-level flow here showing where that convection is located. And in general, uh, the three kilometer NAM, which always has a much better handle on the moisture situation uh, than uh, the HRRR, uh, shows dew points here into the upper 50s holding across northeastern Colorado uh, with those winds backing. A uh, little bit of mixing further south across east central Colorado, definitely southeastern Colorado. Uh, that's going to prevent or limit the threat of supercells uh, that far south, closer to the I-70 corridor. Uh, but it does look like uh, the HRRR is uh, hinting at kind of a, a linear convective mode here across east central and southeastern Colorado, and then the threat of more of a supercellular nature across the southern Nebraska Panhandle and northeastern Colorado, where those surface winds are able to remain more backed. And uh, here you can see uh, this is the uh, forecast uh, valid for 0Z. Let's step back to about 21Z just before these storms develop. And this shows a textbook Colorado cyclone uh, Lee cyclogenesis happening here. Uh, that surface slowed down to 997 uh, millibars located near or just to the south of Denver. And anywhere to the northeast of that surface low is where you'd expect uh, the greatest backing of those surface winds. But look at it across east central Colorado. You've got uh, some very well backed uh, winds uh, there at the surface as well. And so this isn't your classic high plains event. This is kind of a hybrid here where you have this uh, textbook low level jet uh, here. This is 700 millibars, uh, a couple of kilometers up uh, out of the due south at about 35 to 40 knots. Uh, it does look like uh, northeastern Colorado is right in the nose of that strongest low level jet. Looking at 850. Southeasterly winds uh, a bit more out there and then that reaches the surface as you go up a little bit closer to the high plains. Uh, the zero to three kilometer EHI or energy helicity index shows that it's 
Max and I is actually in East Central uh, Colorado here at 21Z. Uh, the nose of that across Northeastern Colorado uh, definitely could be very interesting. Usually, instead of targeting the bullseyes of these composite indices, usually the gradients or the outer periphery of those bullseyes uh, are the best place to target. Uh, but you can definitely see uh, pretty stout 0 to 3 kilometer EHI, which is uh, the combination of uh, that surface-based uh, CAPE and, and also 0 to 3 kilometer storm relative felicity. You've got an 81 over 59 profile out there near Lyman, southeasterly winds, great directional shear. And look at that hodograph, uh, folks, just to the left of my head there. You've got that incredible, uh, uh, that's a beautiful hodograph, uh, kind of a high plains, uh, great plains type of a hybrid uh, shear profile with the lowest kilometer or so. Uh, you do have some easterlies, but not those due easterlies where they switch around to southwesterly a couple of kilometers up. This is more of a, 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 a hybrid type of a system where you have a big trough off to the west. You do have that low-level jet uh, center near about 700 millibars uh, in the high plains here. You have those southeasterly winds near the surface. You have an abundance of 0 to 3 kilometer cape with those very steep low-level lapse rates and a lot of cape aloft as well. Uh, including uh, near that hail generation zone in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. Extreme instability up there, a lot of shear as well. Hail sizes are going to be immense uh, across eastern Colorado uh, later on this afternoon up to the Nebraska Panhandle as well. So I need to decide whether I'm going to go due east out toward the Lyman area by 21Z or do I head over toward northeastern Colorado uh, or it might even be a bit more favorable. But look at how this environment becomes more prime as we go through uh, 22Z. Uh, one issue with the Nebraska Panhandle is there is going to be a cold front that's going to be surging south through southeastern Wyoming uh, and uh, the Nebraska Panhandle. That could serve to undercut some of those storms. Usually brush is a good target area there in northeastern Colorado. That's also on the nose of that greatest 0 to 3 kilometer storm relative felicity co-located with that surface-based instability. And that environment does expand northeast into northeastern Colorado with time. This is at 5 p.m. Uh, mountain time out here. And look at that environment expand uh, through northeastern Colorado, feeding these supercell storms up there going nuts in northeastern Colorado. You've got that cold front diving south across southeastern Wyoming and uh, the northwestern Nebraska Panhandle. Uh, likely some supercell structures up there as well. Look at these gravity waves embedded within uh, this as well. And you can see these large circular holes within that uh, EHI axis up there in northeastern Colorado. More of an unzipping though all the way down uh, through the high plains into the southern high plains in southeastern Colorado. More of a supercellular mode uh, expected up here in northeastern Colorado. Uh, these are actually those storms that are ongoing across uh, that target area. So it does look like uh, the three kilometer NAM favors the northeastern Colorado target. It's uh, the nose of that low level jet up there. Moisture is better. Uh, look at that low level jet by 0 Z by 6 p.m. You're talking 55 knots punching northeastern Colorado into the southern uh, Nebraska panhandle up there. So you could easily start up near Fort Morgan, uh, extend east toward Brush, and then just follow those storms northward. Northeasterly storm motion anticipated. Uh, we could just pick a uh, sounding in the core of that low level jet. And look at that thing. Beautiful hodograph right there for that tornado potential. High plains insanity right there happening. You've got your a low level jet here near over 50 knots at 700 millibars. So this is going to be a big event. And I think that there's even a chance of some strong tornadoes. Uh, intense tornadoes, a couple of intense tornadoes possibly with those dominant supercell storms across northeastern Colorado into the southern Nebraska panhandle. Getting butterflies in my stomach right now just looking at this thing. Getting shortness of breath up here at 7,800 feet. Looking at that hodograph up there. Starting to feel some sweat starting to form. And uh, look at the storm motions. North northeast at about 35 knots. It is going to be quite meridional. Maybe waiting in the southern Nebraska panhandle or near that Colorado-Nebraska border as these storms rip off to the north uh, wouldn't be a bad uh, idea as well. Either way, though, it is definitely time to hit the road and storm chase on this one here very soon. I'm going to be hitting the road in the next half hour with Gizmo, and we'll be chasing full-blown chase mode uh, today uh, during this event. Uh, dew points are very good uh, today here across Colorado. Uh, and then look what happens on the HRRR. It's still probably over mixing, I bet.
Not as much as yesterday though, and that's probably because the moisture is already here. It's already in place uh, across this target area. And uh, the HRRR seems to be doing a little bit better with this event than it did yesterday. Uh, likely is though over mixing those locations further south southeastern Colorado out there uh, down toward the southern target area where that's going to unzip a little bit more uh, more of a linear convective mode and I do bet there is going to be some type of an east-west boundary that sets up across northeastern Colorado where these storms will initiate down in the uh, where there's a, a little bit more mixing across east central Colorado the lift off to the north northeast and then as soon as they cross that boundary into those more backed winds those more southeast leaves. Uh, likely will uh, develop a tornado threat. Uh, you can see this more uh, supercellular mode up into the southern Nebraska Panhandle. In general, the HRRR is hinting at more of a supercellular mode across the northern portion of this target area, and then more of a linear convective mode further south across east central Colorado uh, there through 0Z. And then that threat, that convective line, pushes out to the east. Uh, this storm continuing to evolve uh, in the Nebraska Panhandle up there as well. Looking back to see when these storms initiate, looks like at about 4 p.m. is when that happens. You can see them start to happen here in northeastern Colorado again, just like yesterday. Probably a bit of a dry line, a Denver cyclone type of a feature, convergence zone. Uh, will push off to the northeast of Denver, could be an initiating uh, factor with these storms. Also the southeasterly upslope flow. Uh, also that jet streak uh, that's punching in in the upper levels is going to provide uh, some lift as well. And by 22Z, uh, that jet streak as well over the target area, that stronger flow uh, dominating uh, the high plains here. And also, Saturday and Sunday look quite substantial. Uh, looks like we're going to be ramping up uh, the ge geographical coverage of the severe weather and the overall intensity and impact of that severe weather as well. Uh, Sunday looks to be a pretty substantial day uh, in terms of that severe weather. And here Saturday, looks like another day across eastern Colorado and the Nebraska Panhandle. Tomorrow, uh, yet another storm chase in general. We can look at the uh, 0 to 3 kilometer EHIs. It's very likely that the uh, massive coverage of storms uh, today across eastern Colorado uh, could have some of an impact. Possibly just north of Denver uh, could be an interesting place to target. Uh, maybe even further south, southeastern Colorado as well out there. But Sunday is definitely a day to watch as uh, this system begins to eject, or at least part of it uh, begins to eject here on Sunday. There you can see it ejecting across uh, western Nebraska and western South Dakota during the day on Sunday. This is looking like it could be an outbreak, folks, setting up here across central, uh, the central and northern plains. Already getting started across South Dakota here. Look at that, this is gonna be a big day, probably from northeastern Colorado, that same target area that's been, get, got hammered yesterday by that supercell storm. It's gonna get hammered again today. Uh, and then possibly even all the way up through the high plains. It looks like western, even central South Dakota with time. Could be very interesting. Likely have a very strong low level jet. Look at this pipe here of zero to three kilometer shear and instability feeding that target area of northeastern Colorado. We're still quite a few days, a couple of days out for Sunday, but we'll, we'll definitely break this down in greater detail as we get a little bit closer. But you can see this low level jet surge on the southern end, uh, the southern high plains of this event. So we'll definitely have to decide between targeting western South Dakota or maybe a southern mode, or the southern mode becoming northeastern Colorado into the southern Nebraska panhandle. Uh, during the day on Sunday as well, and I imagine Monday could also be a storm chasing day. Flipping out over to the uh, operational GFS here. I could see Monday materializing in the Southern Plains. Let's look at the upper pattern here. That was a low level jet. You can see this trough axis extending down through the high plains as well. Uh, there definitely is gonna be a low level jet pop here across Northwest Kansas, Southwestern Nebraska uh, on Monday. Uh, definitely uh, looks like a very chaseable day as well, Monday. Look at that low level jet, 35 to 40 knots there, pumping into Western Kansas. And then finally, looks like Wednesday could be kind of a day off here, maybe, but 
keep in mind, uh, this is just one model and we're starting to get out to that mid range, which hasn't been the most dependable in the model so far. But everybody that's out there storm chasing, remember, chase like a champion today. That means also chase safely, chase passionately, be out there and appreciate those storms, but also respect and try to prevent the dark side uh, that they leave behind uh, by providing those reports, by warning people in the path of these storms, by increasing awareness uh, for severe weather in general. Uh, just so anybody across these target areas uh, is, is, not caused, is not caught by surprise, uh, then it's definitely a big win from the Storm Chaser community. Uh, one of our main roles definitely is uh, increasing awareness for when these events happen, whether it be the Mid-South or over to the High Plains. And I do believe that Monday uh, down there, I agree, Mike, uh, Monday down near the Kansas-Nebraska border looks very interesting as that trough axis extends off to the south. Many days in a row of storm chasing, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Maybe Tuesday could be an off day where we can uh, catch up on some chores. Uh, as well, uh, but it looks like then the second half of next week uh, gets active as well as uh, Tornado Alley definitely comes alive. Today I'm going to be deploying the subsonic sensor on these storms, on these supercell storms across northeastern Colorado uh, into the southern Nebraska Panhandle. And all of our science is made possible uh, by the supporter community here. Uh, so thank you uh, to all of you Team Dominator supporters out there. Makes it possible for us to launch rockets into tornadoes, to deploy this network of subsonic sensors, uh, to develop the Dominator weather stations as well, uh, and never stop and to, to help us to continue to never stop chasing. Should have been out there yesterday on that storm, but Gizmo and I are heading out today with that more robust tornado potential. So be safe out there, everybody. An impactful severe weather day today, but many days ahead in a row of storm chase potential. Never stop chasing.